in the United States, according to CDC for HIV, there are 1 to 1.1 million people infected with HIV right now. There are 56,000 new cases every year. In the world, there is recorded 33 million cases right now. 25 million people have died of HIV since 1981 when it first was recorded. Antiretroviral therapy has distinct limitations. It is toxic, and many people cannot take antiretroviral therapy due to the toxicities. Also, the virus is quite clever, and we know that the virus can mutate in a way that makes it resistant to many of our antiviral therapies. For these reasons, it's now again time to look at other strategies that can help us uh, combat the illness caused by HIV. An antiviral drug is a drug that poisons the virus. It's like an antibiotic. It belongs to what's called antimicrobials, drugs that essentially are pesticides that kill the germs. The problem is viruses are living things, like bacteria, and they will try to survive through the mechanism of natural selection so that after a while, the virus will become resistant to the drugs used to treat it if you're using the drug to kill the virus. We cannot make a definite number of antivirals or antibiotics. There aren't enough ways to interrupt the life cycle of a germ. There aren't enough resources on the planet. Just as we have to start going green with energy, we're going to have to start looking at the immune system as a way of fighting infectious disease. Many people developing HIV infection today are being infected with virus that has already exhibited resistance to antiretroviral therapy. These folks who are developing HIV infection these days are going to need rescue therapies because their virus is going to be resistant to the drugs that we now have available. Cytolin is the first of its kind. It's an immune-based therapy for HIV, which virtually shuts the destructive mechanism of action down. Basically, the, the virus causes the immune system to self-destruct. Well, Cytolin stops that mechanism of action, so the immune system is restored, and the immune system kills the virus. So it's not an antiviral. It doesn't attack the virus. There's no resistance to it. When I was first approached about conducting a clinical trial of Cytolin, I had patients for whom antiretroviral therapy was not effective or it was too toxic for them to receive. I desperately wanted new treatments for my patients that would be more effective and less harmful to them. In our phase one studies, we gave doses of Cytolin to a number of people with HIV disease. They all tolerated it well. That gave me confidence that this treatment could be given more widely and acceptably. I feel that in the patients that we treated in the phase one studies, we did see positive outcomes with their health in the short term. But I do believe that there was enough evidence of benefit in the studies that we conducted to feel enthused about having it go forward into further testing. Cytolin prevents the killer cells of the immune system that were stimulated by HIV infection from destroying the helpful CD4 cells so that the HIV infection does not progress to AIDS. Cytolin blocks that little part of the killer T cell that causes it to kill off all the healthy CD4 cells instead of just going after the virus like it's supposed to. The body needs the CD8 cells. We just want them to work right and not attack the person's own healthy cells. We have many strategies now that work against the virus. We have few, if any, strategies that work to bolster immune system function or to alter immune system function in a way that's favorable uh, to the person infected with HIV. Cytolin represents that opportunity it's completely different than everything that's come along previously. This is a great opportunity to bring a whole different perspective into the care of HIV disease. Any drug being brought to market is financially exhaustive. 
um, and Sidelin is no different. Um, the ability to conduct a trial, to manufacture a drug product, um, costs money. As a physician caring for people with HIV disease, I'm interested in their long-term health. I want them surviving years with their HIV disease, and I don't want them to just survive, I want them to thrive. I want their health to be good, I want their lives to be happy. We are going to need more therapies and more effective therapies to achieve that for the majority of our patients. The potential for silence to save 40 million people, and that is how I see it. The economic potential, you can look at any other company that's done something like this. There's Imclone, they have Herbitux, that's a billion dollar drug. There's no other drug that can do what Silent does.